my theme to you today is where does your affection lie? Where does your affection lie? So by now you should figure out that the verse of focus is verse 2. Set your affection on things above. Hallelujah. 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 Not on things on the earth. Our theme for this year is raise the bar. Hallelujah. While we were in prayer meeting, clearly I heard this one verse drop in my spirit. Set your affection on the things above. It perhaps means that where our affection lies now, we need to raise the bar. Wherever our heart is being influenced to know, needs to be redirected to Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So today is where you will examine yourself to answer the question for yourselves. Where does your affection lie? Praise the name of the Lord. The chapter starts by saying, If ye then be risen with Christ. If he then tells us that something had been declared before. If he then be risen with Christ, it means that the argument of being raised with Christ must have been spoken of before because this is a deductive statement. So after all is said and done, if this be true, then everything else connected to this must also be true. So for us to understand what the if he then refers to, let us go back to chapter 2 for a bit to understand the conversation that was taking place. So in the book of Colossians, Paul wrote to the church in Colossae. And at the time, there were some false philosophies that were rising up in the society. Philosophies that would have encouraged false teaching and false practices about who Christ is and how Christians should live. Kind of like now, as a matter of fact, just like now, so it means that there's something enticing about the false doctrine. There is something deceptive or manipulative that is working because they are not just preaching to benches and empty chairs. There is a gathering that is buying into these false teaching. Just take a look around Jamaica. Just scan Jamaica in your mind and take into record some of these churches that are preaching against Right! 
praise the name of the Lord, he instructed them how to conduct themselves. He said, walk in Christ. Know that you have received him. There is no other way to make it but to walk in Christ. We're talking about where your affection lies. You cannot walk in Christ if your affection doesn't lie in him. Because wherever your affection is, that you will pursue. So if your affection is in this world, then you're going to pursue this world. No wonder so many of us are chasing after things and not chasing after the giver of things. No wonder so many of us want stuff, but we don't want to chase after the giver of stuff. No wonder so many of us think that materialistic things are the big deal, but we want to lose the wheel because the kingdom is not good. The kingdom is not drink. The kingdom is not meat. That's not what this life is about. It's in this life only. Is to grow up in spiritual maturity. 
I hear pastor prophesy the other night. And he said that we're going to get, he's prophesying for good husbands and good wives. But let me shift your focus just for a bit. Because if you are not godly, then when that good husband or good wife comes, you don't have the discernment to pick up that that's the one for you. Here's the flip side. If you're not godly, when they see a tiny demonic one that come, you don't have the discernment to pick up say that's enough for you. So before you go pursue and talk about you promoting yourself to be married, make sure that by yourself you are consecrated under the blood of Jesus Christ. Make sure by yourself you are empowered with the truth and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when that man or that woman come, you need to be able to discern what is of the spirit and what is of the flesh. You cannot afford to lose your way because of a husband or a wife. You cannot afford to lose your way because you're getting up in age and life will pass you by.
that when they come, they test the crowd like them are artists. So they are test for the crowd to see when them crowd stay alive. And then that decides which song them never first. I don't test crowd. Because if you come with your affection set in the right place, and I come with my affection set in the right place, then your heart has to receive the word of God. There is no question or two ways about it. So I don't come to test a crowd. I don't come to set a soul on fire. I don't have to worry about my own fire. My hope would be is that you come with your own fire. Because when fire and fire connect in this place, Buried, uh, our sins were buried with him also. 
for. Bless the name of Jesus. So what we do is just a public declaration of the work that is already done on the cross. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. We were buried with Christ in our baptism and we raised with him to the faith of the apparition of God within us. So it means when I went down, God himself did an apparition. Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank God. 
himself does in you. What no other God can do. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is made perfect in us. At the moment you decide that I am done with this life. At the moment we recognize that we are dead in sin. There is no hope in sin. There is no joy in sin. This is not about it, not that it be enticed you. This is about the big picture down the end of the road. There is no comfort in sin. There is no peace in sin. So once we recognize that when we are in sin, we are dead. But when we convict ourselves, when God convicts us, and we declare that he is Lord, that which was done on the cross, all the sins that were nailed, all the pain that he bore, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is made activated inside of us. So we are no longer slaves of the law, but we are sons and daughters by grace. We praise the name of Jesus. We were dead in sin, but he quickened us together. Quicken me, come alive. So we were dead in the life of sin. But he quickened us together with himself. When he forgave us all our trespasses, all our errors, all our faults, all our iniquities, take for everything, he nailed it to the cross. Take more where you never want to tell nobody. He nailed it to the cross. He bore in his flesh the sins of the world. And when they pierced his hands and his feet, it was symbolic of our sins being nailed to the cross. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. The word of God says he blotted out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us. In other words, we were guilty as charged, and our record was messy. Praise the name of the Lord. Before Jesus came, there was no grace. There was only law. So if you break the law, then you had sin. So what the word of God wants to say to us is that every error made by violating the law, every iniquity, every mess you mess up, when he was nailed to the cross, he nailed the sins with him there. Now you know what the songwriter meant when he said, what anguish and loss, Jesus went to the cross and he carried my sins with him there. They are nailed to the cross. So anybody never know where it comes from. The word of God said, he nailed all of our sins to the cross and blotted out every sin. So your record is new. Your reputation is new. Your identity is new. Your mindset is new. Because when he raised up, I rose up with him. Praise the name of Jesus. And he didn't just raise up and give me new life. But he raised up and overthrew principalities. He raised up and overthrew powers. He raised up and overthrew rulers of darkness. And spiritual wickedness in high places. And he told me according to his word. That he has given me the keys to the kingdom. So whatsoever I found on earth. Is found in heaven. And whatsoever I lose on earth.
We're not gonna last if our eyes can't stay fixed on Jesus. We're not gonna last if our desire cannot stay consistent. We're not gonna last if our hope is in this world only. Because just as those four ladies represented the old man, so is your old man daily trying to catch up with you now. And because this devil is real, he's going to continue sending the old man after you. He's going to continue putting temptation in your way. He's going to continue putting trials in your way. He's going to continue putting struggles in your way. He's going to make the fight hotter and hotter. Jesus. 